Multiple myeloma is a monoclonal plasma cell that arises from the bone marrow. Remember, plasma cells' prime function is to produce large amounts of antibodies. In this image, you can see the characteristic crowding of plasma cells in a patient with multiple myeloma. You should be able to recognize the plasma cell here based off their high nucleus to cytoplasm ratio, as well as their eccentric nucleus. Their nucleus also contains the dark heterochromatin that looks like the numbers of a face of a clock. Now, multiple myeloma is the most common primary bone tumor of the elderly. And the clinical picture of a patient with multiple myeloma can be remembered with a mnemonic graph. The C here stands for hypercalcemia, and this is due to destructive bone lesions. The R stands for renal insufficiency. Also, along with this, you'll find Bentz-Jones proteins in the urine. And these Bentz-Jones proteins are really just monoclonal immunoglobulin light chains that are produced by the neoplastic plasma cells. The A here stands for anemia, and this is secondary to the bone marrow being taken over by the tumor cells. And the B here stands for bone or back pain, and this is associated with pathologic fractures, as well as lytic lesions. Other interesting features of multiple myeloma include a peripheral smear which shows rouleau formation, which literally looks like red blood cells stacked up like poker chips. So with all these proteins causing red blood cells to stick to each other, like we see in this photo, what's another lab test that may be elevated in patients with multiple myeloma? There you go, the ESR, or the SED rate. And this can be remembered since red blood cells sticking to one another is pretty much the definition of a sedimentation rate. Now patients with multiple myeloma also have increased risk of infections. While this may seem mildly counterintuitive, all their plasma cells are making antibodies, but they aren't making antibodies to anything in particular. So all these antibodies just float around and do a bunch of nothing, and therefore infections are allowed to run rampant. Multiple myeloma is also associated with another condition that causes excess protein to settle out of the bloodstream and into tissue. Do you know what this is? There you go, primary amyloidosis. This next image here is a plain film of a skull, and you can clearly make out the lytic lesions of multiple myeloma. Here, it looks like little chunks of bone have actually been punched out. And this is why its name is sometimes called punched out lesions. Thinking about multiple myeloma, the diagnosis is usually made by performing protein electrophoresis of the urine or the serum. For the serum, this is known as an SPEP. And for the urine, this is known as a UPEP. And these stand for serum protein electrophoresis and urine protein electrophoresis. Now, a normal SPEP looks something like the drawing here with the first tall spike being the albumin and the next small four humps being the alpha-1 protein, the alpha-2 protein, the beta protein, and the gamma protein. Now this is the drawing of a normal SPEP with the first spike being albumin, the second being alpha-1, the third being alpha-2, the fourth being beta, and the fifth being gamma. Now here, the alpha, beta, and gamma are all your globulin proteins, and the gamma globulins are the ones that help you form immunoglobulins, which are involved in antibody production. So if you had a patient with multiple myeloma, what do you think their SPEP would look like? There you go. You'd expect to see a gamma spike, and in this case, it's called an M spike. Now even in multiple myeloma, the albumin levels and the alpha and beta globulin levels would all be essentially normal. So only real change here is the gamma spike that you can see here. Now this spike actually represents the overabundance of monoclonal antibodies. And just to be clear, it's called an M spike because it's monoclonal proteins, not because it's IgM antibodies. And in fact, in multiple myeloma, this M spike is made up predominantly of IgG and IgA proteins. Now while we're on it, can you think of another B cell cancer that might present with an M spike on SPEP? There you go, that'd be Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. And importantly here, the M spike in this case is made up of IgM proteins. So remember, in multiple myeloma, the M spike is made up of IgG and IgA, and in Waldenstrom's, the M spike is made up of IgM. Now patients with Waldenstrom's usually present with hyperviscosity symptoms, like mucous membrane bleeding, headaches, visual changes, seizures, and even strokes. And in this case, this increased viscosity is due to all the extra protein floating around in the blood. Generally, patients with Waldenstrom's do not have any lytic lesions on x-ray or any crab findings. So if you see any of these on a test question, be thinking about multiple myeloma, not Waldenstrom's. Now, if you have a patient where multiple myeloma is suspected, you often need to perform a bone marrow biopsy. And if on this biopsy, you have greater than 10% monoclonal plasma cells, this confirms the diagnosis of multiple myeloma. 
So what if you have less than 10% plasma cells on bone marrow biopsy, but the patient does have an M-spike on the SPEP? Well, if the patient is asymptomatic, this would be called monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance, or MUGUS. As you may expect from the name, this condition involves monoclonal plasma cell expansion without any symptoms. While MUGUS itself is not dangerous, it does carry an increased risk of progression to multiple myeloma. So therefore, these patients must be followed closely.